Welcome to the Harshie Podcast. I'm Brandon. And January. We're back. We are back. For like the eighth time. <laughs> For like the eighth time. <laughs> we uh, thought we would just jump back into putting out some podcast episodes. And today is going to be a short one because something that we have learned over the last few years and we try to apply is when things seem big, just simplify it, break it down. You don't have to record an hour long podcast today. You can record a 10 minute one and you don't yeah. have to do, you know, you don't have to come up with the answers for all these things. Just do one little thing. So when something feels big or overwhelming, I ask myself, how can I break it down and simplify it? So that's what we're doing today. And that's it. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> that was the tip of the day. <laughs> that was a really short one. Uh, but I'm really grateful because uh, Expectful is one of our podcast sponsors really has made it possible for us to continue with recording the podcast. So just want to say thank you to them and encourage you guys to check them out. They're Expectful on Instagram and their website, Expectful.com. It's meditation, mostly for pregnancy and birth and early postpartum is their focus, which is really neat to have one that's specific to pregnancy, birth and postpartum when you're going through that, because let's be real, we're obsessed with it when we're going through it, like nothing else matters. Um, that's really, really nice. So check out expectful.com and uh, check out their Instagram and let me know what you think. Just leave a comment on one of my posts or DM me and, and let me know what you think. So what do you want to chat about today since we're just rolling with it today? What's on your mind? Well, would you like me to share something? Yes. <laughs> I'm having a challenging time thinking of something. <laughs> uh, well, my favorite snack right now, well, I have many, <laughs> but one of them I was eating before we started recording, and that is salted peanut butter pretzels. They are definitely not gluten-free, but they are vegan. And to have a salty breaded pretzel and then put peanut butter in the middle of it, it doesn't get much better than that. Yeah. Everyone in the family loves those. Yes. They are really good. And now my grandparents love them too. And my aunt too. So basically all of us are eating peanut butter stuffed pretzels. In case you guys were curious, now that has been settled. <laughs> I don't eat gluten just about all of the time. So I don't eat those. But there's been a few times in the past week when I've got a little sloppy and mm, consumed sloppy. some gluten and oh gosh, really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. it's so <laughs> yummy. There's nothing like bread. I actually just bought all the ingredients for homemade bread in our bread maker from Trader Joe's this week. So some fresh loaves of bread cooking in the house this week will be really, really nice. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And let's talk about how Burger King came out with the Impossible Whopper. That's true. They did. Isn't that neat? And Del Taco came out with their... Beyond Meat tacos and burritos. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is considered vegetarian, so you have to veganize everything and... Yes, sometimes there's cross-contamination, but I just think it's cool that these fast food restaurants are actually having plant-based options. It's a step in the right direction. There are going to be more on the way as well. Oh, for sure. I think within a year, everyone's going to... Everyone will have uh, plant-based plant options. Based. Yeah, yes. for sure. Super cool. The kids are incredibly stoked because we live outside the main city and we don't have a lot of vegan options in our city, in our town. And we do have a Burger King here that opened like a year ago, year, year and a half ago. And so uh, it was like a big deal in our house that that happened. Of course, our oldest will not touch them because she won't touch anything that could possibly have cross-contamination. But the rest of the kids are excited about it. So I will say it's the first time I've eaten at a Burger King. Pff, wow. I don't know. Maybe since high school. Yeah, same here. Same here. I didn't like Burger King, actually. So they just got in my good graces. And I stand there and watch them make it, though. I'm like that lady. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, did, I, did, I did like me a Whopper here and there in high school. In high school. Yeah. Yeah. An occasional sure. Big Mac. But I was mostly a Taco Bell guy. <laughs> $5 and you could eat like a king or that a queen. True. That is true. A Taco Bell. So um, because we've been a little bit quiet, some updates from us, you guys, is we are transitioning me out of traveling as I've yes. been sharing all over social media. I have seven more events this year. This weekend is in Winchester and we were able to open up another 10 or 15 tickets because we changed venues, literally just changed venues uh, last week. So, uh, and then after that is Fallbrook, California. And then I have five more after that. So you can check those out at bwfconference.com. But we're transitioning out of that for 
me and for us and our family and more into Brandon practicing chiropractic again. Yes, I am. So you've opened up. This is week three. And uh, yeah, we're just slowly but surely going to work on that and build another practice finally again. That's a whole yes. other, like, I actually think we should do a whole other episode about why chiropractic and your story in chiropractic and yes. raising our kids with chiropractic. Um, but just to do an update right now, that's what we're working on in transitioning. And I'm also helping my grandparents, the realtors, with their website, blog, social media as well. So, and we started the new school year. We homeschool. So there's, yes. yeah, a lot going on, but it's all really good stuff. But even when it's a good transition and when you've been working towards for a really long time, it doesn't mean that you don't have days that are hard or scary or full of anxiety or worry or this or that. So uh, there's been a lot of difficult, difficult moments over the last, especially month, as we have hit the actual transition point. Um, so that's been really hard to navigate at times, but the thing that's helped us the most is staying in the moment. Yes, absolutely staying present. Yeah. Which I think should be another podcast episode as well. We should write these down because we're saying that, but we need actually, I've actually already had this idea. So it's like on the forefront of my mind. Now we are accountable to doing this. We are, we are. So if I forget, I'll have to re-listen to this episode. You'll, (laughs) okay. (laughs) Anyway, so staying present in the moment. Present in the moment. And, as someone who was formerly attached to the future, like you wouldn't believe, like holding on to the future, trying like to control, control it so badly, yeah, and you really can't control the future. And then, so that w- that was half of me. Like I had one foot in the future, and then one half, one foot in the past, trying to somehow will and wish some different outcome for something that happened years ago. And I didn't really know I was doing that until recently. And then I realized it and it's like, oh my gosh, I am never just in the moment. Yeah. And it's making my life really challenging. And so. Yeah, it was. To say the least. So being present in the moment uh, has been incredibly huge game changer for me. But you don't get it till you get it. Yeah, it's just, it just happened one day and. It clicked. It clicked. Because I know I've been saying this for years and other people have said it for decades. And this whole idea of like the past is depression, the future is anxiety. Mm -hmm. You have to stay present in this moment because this is the only moment that exists. But until it clicks, whether it's just hearing it enough or practicing it enough or some big life event happens that makes it click into place and makes you realize that really none of it all matters except what's going on right now in this moment, then it just doesn't doesn't resonate until no. and doesn't resonate till it resonates <laughs> exactly <laughs> doesn't click till it clicks so mm-hmm. yeah that's been a big big thing the last like 10 days of just really trying to stay present in the moment and what do we need to take care of right now and and um that this is all what we want this is the transition we want but it's also okay to say okay this is still hard and some days we feel more productive other days we realize we need to back off and rest which is really, really hard. <laughs> but I feel so much better when I do. So yeah. I, ha- I have been, yeah, yeah. resting a little bit more. And But what, yeah, I what's mean... What's the quote you like? When things get hard, don't quit, just rest. Yeah, I don't know who started, who originally said that, but yeah, exactly. You, you it's said great. It. It's yeah. a great quote. It's true. It's well, really true. Absolutely. Because I think like we get so burned out and we're like, I'm done with this. And you want to like quit, walk away, whatever. And it's like, wait, when you're starting to feel burned out or it's getting like overwhelming or you want to just throw in the towel or have a t- temper tantrum like your three and a half year old. <laughs> that's when you really do need to slow down and rest. And it's really easy to be the martyr and be like, but I can't, I can't, I can't. And it's like, well, you're going to at some point, because at some point it's all going to fall apart, your body, your health, your mental health, what something, right? So when you can rest a little bit, and we recently did an episode on self-care talking about this, but you're able to keep showing up and doing all the stuff you're supposed to be doing. So it's true. Life goes on. So being able to stay in the moment really helps get through that for sure. Well, you said people have been saying it for decades. It's like, no, people have been saying it for millennia. Centuries. You're yeah, right. It's you're like right. one of those. No, yeah. but I, it's just like an affirmation of how powerful that that is. It's, it's like these one of these ages old truths. And we hear it. We all hear it. I've heard this thing for years. But man, yeah, I just... 
it's got to click. And, and then, it's understandable yeah, because life yeah, can be so hard and we're all trying to get by mostly on our own and nuclear families and our own little house in our own houses without a lot of support. And there's financial stress and relationship stress and job stress. And I think a lot of us accumulate a lot of like, Oh, we should get married and buy a house and have kids and do this job and work our way up. And you do all this in your twenties and like even early thirties. And I think you get to be about 35, 40 and you're like, this is not working. But I think also it takes like a level of like, a, just being done and B, confidence to be like, you know what? I'm changing shit up, even though it's going to be really hard or people might not understand why in the world I would, but I don't have to explain that. And, and we've dealt with this too, because we disagree on what I should be doing in work and work related stuff. And it's because, you know, you're like, you should do more, you should do more, you should do more. And I'm like, that doesn't bring me happiness. That does not bring me happiness. And it doesn't serve. So that doesn't serve me or my family. So if you're finding yourself in this place of either you're in a transition or you want to transition, like it's not going to be easy, baby, but you can do it. I mean, so many of us have, and it's okay to want change, but day to day, you have to stay present in the moment for sure. Yeah. You can only do so much in 24 hours. Think about that. Yeah. Yeah. We want to like change everything in like a day or two or a week. And it's like, you're working with like eight to 12 actual working business hours. Right. And then everyone, Mm -hmm. you know, sleeping or resting, whatever it is. And it's like, there's only so many hours in the day. Like you can only do so many, so much from sunrise to sunset. Like at some point you do have to rest and realize I did what I could today. I'll do what I can tomorrow when tomorrow comes. Like Hagrid, like we'll, we'll deal with what comes when it comes. But you know, there's something like that. It's, it's true. Absolutely. Were you going to say something? And I just kept going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> I just completely forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, babe. No, that's okay. You, what you were saying, I'm I'm sure it was more entertaining and probably not. You more have, resonating than no. whatever drivel was going to come out of that's my mouth. That's not true. <laughs> that's not true at all. You have really great input and insight. Well, thank you. You're welcome. So, have you decided on your favorite snack right now? My favorite snack. Well, so I gave up sugar a few weeks ago, and it's both good and bad. It's good because I just I feel better. It's a big noticeable difference. And it's bad because I like sugar, and I like all the things I used to eat mm-hmm. that had sugar in them. And so I think that that's not fair. I have not and given I, up sugar. I don't want to stop sl- my feet and complain and whine, but... That's how I felt when I gave up dairy. It hasn't been as hard as I thought it was going to be. Surprisingly, I've had a few hard days, but I am feeling noticeably different physically. So I, to me, that has always been a game changer. If, if something makes me feel incredibly better, then I tend to... You still haven't answered my question. What, what I was getting around to <laughs> is no, I don't have a favorite oh. snack because <laughs> I gave up sugar. <laughs> No, damn it, I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe coffee is your favorite snack? Yes. Okay. Coffee. Oh, cherries. Yes. So there frozen cherries. So there I don't ha- I don't have any added sugar. Let me preface that because sugar and fruit, no one can ever convince me that that's bad. Because it's not. So I've been digging frozen cherries lately. I'll thaw them a little bit and mm-hmm. then oh my gosh. It's like So you're getting all your sugar from fructose and no added sugars. Yeah, I'm not getting the Yeah, you and our youngest love frozen cherries. Mm-hmm. Do you put cinnamon on yours still? No, I haven't done that lately. Yeah. I used to do that sometimes. Yeah. It's pretty good. But. Well, I have not given up sugar because anytime I go to do something like that, it's a slippery sip, slippery slope for me. And I got I, I fall down a rabbit hole of diet culture and it's just not good for my, I guess, confidence and self-love. So the moment I start to almost do something like that, I actually talk myself out of it at this point. That's just the season I'm in right now. Um, so another favorite of mine is the vegan salted caramels I've been getting at Fry's. Mm. And the kids love the, uh, it's, the, the brain is, I don't know the brain of those. Can, is it candies? caramels i don't know anyways and then the kids love the unreal peanut butter cups those are vegan as well so everyone everyone knows my grandparents my aunt everyone knows aisle 16 is where it's at at our fries because that's where we always go to get the siete chips and then the vegan chocolate treats (laughs) (laughs) you should hear my grandparents talk about when they took the kids to the store one time 
like my grandfather said, yeah, we were all done. We picked out some stuff. We were, you know, about to leave. And I was like, anybody need anything else? And the kids were like, uh, well, we haven't gone to aisle 16 yet. <laughs> like aisle <laughs> 16. They went to aisle 16 and filled that cart up because nanny doesn't say no to the, the great grandkids. So that did get filled up. Yeah, <laughs> it was wonderful. Our favorite snack transitions and a little bit of what did you call it? Dr- drizzle, drabble, dibble, dribble, <laughs> dribble. <laughs> <laughs> and some sniveling drivel. <laughs> <laughs> so our older two kids are watching The Office, and they're like completely That's binge so watching it, and they're like losing their minds over how funny it is. And if you ever watch it in the later seasons, that one character, Gabe. <laughs> And talk about uh, sniveling drivel. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's yes. Gabe. You know who I thought of when you said that was who? Malfoy from mm. Harry Potter. Yeah. yeah, that's who. That's who popped into my mind. So yeah, he was pretty sniveling too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we also mentioned a few other topics of our next few podcast yes. episodes. So we'll work on those and get those out for you guys. And I will and re-listen to this episode to figure out what they were because I forgot. <laughs> you can write them down for it. Jot them down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Until next time. Adios. Love you. <laughs>